Totally. Hey, good morning, everybody. I remind everyone to please turn off your cell phones, quiet them, mute them, turn them off. Yeah. You know, I gotta do that, right? And I'm not gonna pick on my spouse because she's not here. Okay. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> Take a breath. I don't know what we're supposed to do with all this sunshine. <laughs> Isn't it great out there? I mean, really, really. So again, cell phones off. Good morning. My name is Sally Wants. For those who don't know it, it's my pleasure to be your service leader today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. For those of you who don't know, we stand on the land of the very first people of the Sayusla region, the Sayusla Indians, Florence. Sayusla Indians. We honor that tribe, those people. I want to say for that seven generation rule, three generations back, current generation, and three generations forward. We thank them, we honor them, and we acknowledge what they have provided for us. Let us be good stewards of this land. Thank you. Blessed be. So Tuvia, are you ready? We are going to be singing our opening hymn, number 123. It's called Spirit of Life. And uh, Tuvia, uh, are you going to stand back here? Yeah. Nice and quiet. We're going to sing. He's going to play Spirit of Life. We're going to sing Spirit of Life, number 123. Um, you can take off your mask if you're back here, but you must put it back on when you're back over there. there. Okay? Okay? So if you want to rise as you are able, we're going to sing Spirit of Life. This is how we open our service. For those who don't know, Oregon's a good place to be, right? Wow. So thank you for being here. 
Also included in there is just a little brochure about our fellowship so you can get to know us a little bit better, okay? So at this time, I'm going to ask that you just take a moment, turn to the person next to you, right, left, up, down, front, back, and just say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who's missing today? If they're missing, you might want to reach out, check on them, see how they're doing, give them a call, tell them you missed them. And if they're here today, yay! And for those of you not here today, please know we are sending you our best wishes. And uh, there's reasons you're not here today. We respect them all. And just know we are here when you choose to return, okay? So we have a lovely crowd here today. It's lovely outside, and ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so just really on a fun side, last week we introduced three new members. Lynn Hughes, who I don't see here today. She's in bed. Hmm? She's in bed. She's in bed. Okay, we've got Ashley and we've got Diana. So I just want to ask, how's it going? Are you changed? Are you different? <laughs> now that you're new members of our fellowship? I'm a much better person. You're a much better person. <laughs> Coming from Ashley, that's that's a not a big improvement. <laughs> and Diana, what? That's up for today. That's up for today. How's the new house coming? We should close this week. Yay! Yes, 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 yes. Um, following today's service, Ruth will be here. Do you want to meet up front, or do you want to meet in the library? I'm either way. You tell me. <laughs> Let's do it in the library, then everyone can chat here, right? Yeah. So okay. Dialogue circle in there. I'll have my computer on if someone needs to be in by Zoom. So. Okay. So after service, we have two, two uh, opportunities for you. One, Catherine Hemmons always provides affirmative prayer, and she will be in our side room over here, which is nicely protected with a, uh, a little barrier, so for privacy. Ruth will be in the library to have a dialogue circle talking about today's message, and then she will dig right into her class called Natural Abundance. So you're welcome to stay, okay? Um, so in the program today, you'll find listing of upcoming events. I encourage you to look at that. Take this home with you um, so you can mark on your calendar things that are coming up. we got birthdays coming up. Woo! Brooke is coming up. Helen, Nancy, Maya, Ruth, Nin, and Don Gardner. That's true. That was yeah. <laughs> Ruthie B. And Obi. And uh, Obi. Yes. Very uh, good. Obi. Mm -hmm. And I only know about birthdays if they're on our calendar, so I don't have that on there. So anyway. Lovely. Thank you for that. Happy birthday, everybody. Are there any other announcements you wish to share? Deborah, please. Yes. Um, we're asking people to use M95 masks in here now. There's a new supply of them in the back there. Right here. Right there by the door. Yep. If you need one. Large package full of them. And um, the three in your back. back. Yes, they are reusable a few times at least. Um, you don't need a new one every week. Um, if anybody put any of their special ornaments on the tree, today's the day to take them home with you because we're going to be taking the tree down soon. So our holiday tree is coming down. If you brought an ornament with you and put that on the tree, please take that with you today. Um, I'm certain whatever's left, we will put in the library somewhere for the next couple of weeks. Judy, yes? Um, and you saw, maybe it's on the last, last Wednesday that oh, the, yes. week, the We Care program, which is kind of spearheaded by Florence Indivisible, but us here at Booth have been really active in it and getting, for like four months, they've been doing treats to uh, all the hospitals, the pharmacies, the vaccination clinics, just letting those folks know how much we care and how important their work is. They're moving forward with that program. They're gonna do this on a monthly basis and they're gonna be targeting the schools now. Targeting the schools. schools. So so the teachers, teachers, let's let's rephrase that. They're going to be yeah. they're going to be focusing on focusing the on the schools. <laughs> the teachers, the, you know, the administrators, the yeah. the whole staff there. Yeah. So in the back you will see a little box back there that says we care. And that's where you can bring your treats right in there now. Where's or the box? It's, it's, it's back there underneath the uh, where the name tags are. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, good. Right so okay. There's, we, there's some crackers in there, there's candies that are individually wrapped, there's emergency packets okay. for energy bars, and there's some thank you notes. That's probably the most important thing. Yeah. If you just can take a few minutes and just write a note to reminding these folks about how important your teachers were to you or what kid, your kids felt about it, they need to know and care. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I know it, it really does mean a lot if you do that little personal note. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be on a post-it note. But they go through the box, the people that are in the break rooms, and they take these things and either eat them, read them, and enjoy them. So um, bring your treats, bring your words of encouragement uh, every Sunday, and we'll make sure that they get them, okay? And maybe we can find a spot for that basket in the We Care up front, Judy, so we can really see it each okay. Sunday. Okay? So we've got some room. Anyway, let's think about that for next week, okay? Thank you. Oh, I haven't invited anybody to do the chalice lighting. Zanna, would you? You are, you are so brave. <laughs> we struggle with this all the time. That's not, can we get that little flag? Okay. So we're going to light our chalice. This is the uh, an honor to light our chalice. It's um, uh, words come from Robert Gray, titled Sacred. You get an applause when you come to church here. <laughs> we join our vo voices in a holy communion of mind and heart, dedicated to the promises that bind us in compassion, one with another. In this hour, we light the flame that signals our intention to find the sacred in every living thing. Blessed be. Blessed be. Catherine's going to lead us in joys and concerns, and I get to drop the shells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So this is the time of the service where we share our joys and concerns. We can enhance our trust of ourselves and our community by sharing what may be troubling us. Or raise our joy quotient by sharing the good news in our lives. Is there anyone that has anything to share? Most of you know the routine. Line up over here. Okay. Sally will drop a shell. We're going to get the microphone. Mm -hmm. Testing one, two. I know this looks more like an announcement because I have a clipboard, but I'm going to work, I'm going to work it into my joys and concerns. Um, I won't be here next Sunday because I have to get a COVID test on later in the week to prepare for oral surgery next week. So I also, before I knew it was going to be postponed, uh, signed myself up to um, be a greeter next week, and I can't do that. So I need a volunteer. Oh, God bless you. I'll put you on here. I'll scratch my email. And, and in fact, there is an opening for the 23rd also. I'm going to put the clipboard back there, I'm not going to pass it around, but uh, please jump in if you haven't done this in a while. You can see how much fun it is. Didn't you have fun this morning, Karen? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to say hi to everybody. Yeah, you just have to restrain yourself from grabbing them and hugging them maybe, but uh, it's a fun job. And if you've already signed up, or going to sign up, be sure to take one of the sheets back there that give you all the little duties. It's not hard. There's just a few details that you need to remember, okay? So think good thoughts for me. For me, I have oral surgery, and I expect a complete and swift recovery from that. Yes. So um, thank you very much. A shell for that and a shell for greeters. Go greeters. Yeah. Anyone else? I have a few things. Okay. So, uh, Raymond Davis, who you know, she's a member of our community. She is now in Riverbend Hospital right at the moment. And she's going to be transferred Monday, hopefully, to uh, a rehabilitation center called Avina? Avira? Something like that. Avamir. Avamir. That's it. Okay. Um, I will have the address. We'll put that in um, the blast so that we can uh, send cards to her. You know, she's had a longer haul on this 
than she ever imagined. But she's very determined and pragmatic and is taking it step by step. And um, we support her in that completely so we can see her smiling face again. I love her show. Yes, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. show. So I have another request um, surrounding Xana. Well, actually surrounding Tack, her little old pug. Now, um, he's being fed a couple times a day and, um, you know, getting some visits. But he's pretty lonely. I mean, he's more so than cats. Some of you may remember I was up here fostering a cat of Marsha Phillips. Well, dogs are even more in need of attention, although he sleeps probably about 23 hours of the day. <laughs> but he likes to look up and see that there's people around and be petted. So if there's anyone that they think, now, now this is not a long-term thing. Rima will be back. So any, I have one offer already, but I like some backup offers. Anyone that would like to take him into uh, your home for a couple of weeks, and he's, you know, he's housebroken, he listens, he's a little deaf and he can't see very well, but he does listen. I mean, he, he you know, you talk to him and kind of loud, you know, <laughs> and he will follow directions. So just putting it out there, okay? okay. Right, please, for attack. Okay, uh, one other, um, Jeff Lovejoy brought to my attention, uh, Reverend Dawn, who is the new minister of the Episcopal Church. Um, she went through some surgery recently and went back to have a checkup on this and he hasn't heard from her since, so he's concerned. She is a great new member of our extended family, our community. She's very grounded and lovely and, um, you know, keep her in your hearts and prayers because we need her in our community. Okay, so Reverend Dawn. We need to send cards to her. Yes, let's send cards to her. The Episcopal Church. It will... We'll put the button. We'll it'll put... You. Great, okay. <coughs> and a final shell for all those we don't know about. The shy ones. The ones that think they are not important. The ones on the edges of our community. You know? We hold you in our heart. Our love expands to include you wherever you may be. I finished with these affirmations I just plucked out of a book. They didn't have any origin. Even if it seems otherwise, the laws of the universe are designed to assist your progress. Hidden within everything you can't do are the things you can. I clear my mind of expectations and look for the answers in the improbable and even the unpalatable, as well as in the illogical and the, as well as the logical and the comfort, comfortable. Blessed be. Uh, yeah. So hello to all that we just talked about. Hello, hello, hello. And yes, we're talking about you. <laughs> you have a responsive reading that was in your in your program this morning. I invite Zana to come forward. She will be your leader of this responsive reading. Zana. Okay, got it. Ready? Ready? This is a covenant invites relationship by Lisa Ward. A covenant is not a definition of a relationship. It is the framework for our relating. A covenant leaves room for chance and change. It is humble toward evolution. It claims, I will abide with you in this common endeavor to be present as best as I can in our becoming. This calls for a level of trust, courage, and sacrifice that needs to be nurtured, renewed, and affirmed on a regular basis. A creed creates a static truth, something that does not incorporate new insights and realities. 
thank you. I managed to shift her schedule just a little bit. <laughs> so I thought it would help to have other people singing along for a song that I don't think we've ever sung. But I'd invite you to consider the words again, and I was going to suggest we might even sing it a fourth time. Love will guide us, illness has tried us. Hope inside us will lead the way on the road from fear to freedom. Love will guide us to a new day. You guys agree. Thank you. Forgive me, but I don't know how to talk and sing for three or four hours without having some drink sometime. <laughs> it's such a treat to see you all, and such a treat to be here and be part of this community, both the online and in person. Yeah. Indeed. Mm, how nice. Our theme for this month in January is living with intention. Living with intention. And if you read the blast or saw the descriptions, you may recall that what I'm suggesting is it's not enough to just kind of float with what we've been you know, drawn to or what the people around us offer us or what the culture suggests. There is not much life in that. <laughs> you know, there's a point, for some reason I have the image of um, same time next year, Alan Alda yes. and Ellen Burstyn, and there's a point where she's going, I got the husband and the kids and the house and the, the perfect brand new kitchen table. Is that all there is? <laughs> right. She was flowing with what the culture was saying. And most women actually go through that somewhere between 35 and 40. And I've seen that over and over again, a crisis where up till that point they followed, 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 and then they went, that isn't working anymore. And there's this crisis. It's often a health crisis as well as an emotional crisis. I went through it, actually, and I had seen it in others, and then I went, oh, look, I'm doing it too. <laughs> Major health crisis. Out of which most of us learn, I can't do it that way anymore, but I want to continue to live a life that is fulfilling. And I know that must be possible. And I want to continue to be loving and giving you know, without destroying me. And that must be possible. And so we begin to set our intentions for how we're going to be in this world and on this planet. It generally hits guys a little later. As I've observed, it generally hits about the mid-40s to the early 50s when there's, I've got the family and I've got the, the house and I've got the cars and I've got the good job and I've got everything that I was programmed to do and it is not working. And I need to figure out a way to make my life work. And the first time I really encountered an effective approach to that, Bradshaw. Remember Bradshaw, the inner child stuff? Well, he, wanted, he suggested that when that happens, and it almost invariably does happen, the thing to do is to go back to when we were very young and see what our dreams were. I want to be an astronaut, or I want to write fiction, or I want to do this, and realize what we dropped along the way that really is part of who we are, and we let it go. And by letting it go, we left part of ourselves behind. There's a shamanic practice called soul retrieval. And I think it's related to this. That part that we've left behind in various places and various times in our lives that is really a huge part of who we are, but we aren't living it. It's somehow just hanging out back there. And it's pulling us apart. Now we need to bring it back. And when we do that, something happens. I actually had a conversation yesterday with a 45-year-old father of two who has followed his path and he's making the bucks and he's going, it's not working. <laughs> right. I went, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, I need, and I was just delighted, of course he's a therapist so it helps. He says, I need to find a way where every part of me is in alignment. And I went, that's it. That's the key. 
It was the key to my own getting well, and it is the key to having a life that is, in fact, what the universal processes, thank you very much for bringing that up, are in place for. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Thomas Troward, many people have written, um, you might have heard of Wallace Wattles even, have written that the universe is structured in such a way that every being in it is given everything that it needs for its fulfillment, for becoming fully what it can be. The acorn is a forest, right? It has everything it needs to become not just a tree, but a whole forest of trees, and not just a single tree. I mean, not just a, a forest of single types. It's not a monoculture. The nature of the oak is such that it encourages the related species that then become the full ecosystem we call a forest. This is so cool. And each one of us is exactly that. There is no way that any single part of this whole system of interconnected beings, the interconnected web of life of which we are a part, there is no way any one part of that can do something without affecting many. In fact, without affecting the whole. That is a fundamental systems principle, and some of you know that was a lot of my graduate work. If we can understand that, then as we bring ourselves into alignment, what we are bringing into alignment are all those parts of our acorn self, of our tree self, and the potential for all the other species that make up the forest around. And there's another way to talk about that, and that's with, with the idea that Rupert Sheldrake introduced called morphogenetic fields. There is a field, an electromagnetic field around the body. That's what MRIs and CT scans are all about, reading those fields, right? And the Heart Math Institute is you know, doing all kinds of good research around that field. And each of our fields overlap with the other fields, right? And then the group becomes a field, and then the community becomes a field, and then, you know, so the and each field has its own unique pattern of vibrations and possibilities in it. So as I come into alignment, then you come into greater alignment, and then the world around us comes into greater alignment, and love will guide us. <laughs> and the hope inside us shows us the way. The hope of who we can be, of what we know is possible, the realization within us of, oh, that's what I was here for. That is my fulfillment. And I'll talk about that later. <laughs> what that specific line means on another talk. But as we come into that, as we have those awarenesses, then they reinforce. And as we can be grateful and appreciative for each little tiny step that seems to be, oh yeah, that feels more aligned. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you, people. Thank you, world. You know, for providing what is mine to experience so that it is, I can have mine to express in the world so I can experience more fully the world that our heart longs for, each of us individually and all of us collectively. As for those of you who are new, I was a practicing futurist with a doctorate in system science before I went into this business. And one of the things that I would do with it, particularly nonprofit organizations, and I would sit with the board and I'd say, okay, what kind of animal is this organization? we'd get some really interesting drawings. And then I'd say, so what? All of those things actually get in the way of our being aligned with our actual true being, our true nature, and the attention of our fulfillment and our world in alignment and at peace. You can feel that, I hope. Now, for you new folks, I have five toxic words, should, being fully aligned 
and fulfilled in a world that is totally supportive of that. Allow yourself to feel that and see that. Maybe I'll suggest that when we have our quiet meditation when I'm done. And then in that space, be aware that there are images and there are words and there are phrases. And try to stay kind of in that space while you draw images or write words or phrases. And then put that in an envelope and put it away. You don't have to look at it every day. No. <laughs> That's a should. <clears throat> That's a have to. Just put it away. And maybe on your birthday, or maybe toward the end of the year, pull it out and be amazed. So that's one way. But another way hmm, is to simply allow whatever ideas that you've thought of over the year to come up and write it down. Just write down. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to write down all the things that I appreciate about something that is going to be shifting. Okay, so if it's a place to live, and some of you have watched me go through a marvelous dance around places to live for the last few years. Ah, what are the things I've appreciated about where I've lived? What are the qualities? You know, what are the best things about them? When it was, I was realizing that I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue to live alone or not. I made a list of all the qualities that I've appreciated in my partners, or in all the men, actually, that I had ever known from my, my earliest memory when I was two. I didn't grow up with a father. So these were men who came into my life at various times. And you know, all, the, all the qualities that I appreciated, it came out 21 qualities. Put it away, didn't think about it. A few years later, I met a man, and he had 18 of those qualities. Aww. That was kind of nice. He is my best buddy. <laughs> so if we can allow ourselves to focus on that which we have enjoyed and appreciated. Can you feel how there's an alignment on that? Oh yeah, if I've appreciated that, if I'd enjoyed that, I would enjoy more of that. And it is in alignment with who I am. And it, you know, your list is going to be different from my list. And that's one of the things that's so cool about our lives and our worlds, and about being you used, because we accept that our lists are going to be different, <laughs> right? And that our neighbors' lists may be very different from ours. But if they're in alignment with their true heart's desires, it's not going to be conflicting. Isn't that cool? And that's part of why we have the covenant of how to be with one another as Unitarians rather than a creed and a dogma that we have to follow, that should, ought, must, gotta, have to stuff, you know. We don't do that. We agree that from our hearts we will be in this relationship. Yes? Ah, we will seek alignment on some principles that are things we appreciate about the world we live in. The seven principles of Unitarianism are what we appreciate in this world. I want to see more of And so at the end of February, we're going to do something we call appreciative inquiry around Unitarian Universalists here, around Florence Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. And I'm looking forward to helping you do that process. Yeah. Living with intention, getting in touch with who we are, bringing that into alignment. So in this conversation with this fellow yesterday, which I thought was going to be about the treasury of a nonprofit organization that turned out being about, I'm 45 and I'm not like in my life. <laughs> right? mm. We got to that place of, okay, so when you see your life as an ideal life, what does it look like? And how can you gradually, and this is what Bradshaw helped me to understand, gradually begin 
to phase what you're in the middle of now out and phase this other thing in. In Bradshaw, he talked about the story of a doctor, an MD, an MD who had been taking creative writing classes all through high school and undergrad and alongside his biology and chemistry. And then, you know, the family said, oh, you know, you got to be a doctor. And he went with that and he was a good doctor. But now he was in his late 40s and it was not satisfying. And he had everything that he had been told that he should have at this point in his life. And it was not satisfying. And so he remembered creative writing. And he rem remembered how satisfying that had been in his actually junior high, high school and early college years. And he started getting up half an hour earlier writing for half an hour every day. And over a period of several years, his first novel got published, and over a few more years, he was out of the medical field and fully, full-time writing. Now, one of the things about having been a doctor is you're always a doctor, you can't not be. <laughs> but he was full-time earning a living writing. And the doctoring was now something that he could do on an occasional basis in the ER or as, you know, covering the ward for one weekend a month rather than driving him. And it was heavenly. And that's what we're all here to have. That heavenly life. Heaven on earth. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's in our alignment. And so I wish for you that the intentions that you experience for this coming year unfolding, unfolding over this coming year, are totally in alignment with your heart, with your soul, with your dreams, and with your fulfillment, and all of ours. Because as you are, all of us must become. So I'm going to turn on some music and we're going to lower the lights and give you some quiet time. yourself to relax in your body and simply breathe. Allow the sounds to just carry your thoughts with them.
cleanse and breath to bring your awareness back to this space and time. Thank you all so much. Thank you for bringing your computer and your music. Uh, I thank two of you for providing his his joy, his passion as well with us. Thank you very, very much. So as we have become accustomed, every Sunday we practice our spiritual practice of giving. We have two community partners that we work with every single week. The first one is a community partner out there. And that, for the month of January and February, is Saisa Outreach Services. The other partner we have is the one we call FOOF. That's us, the Florence Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. We are a community of ourselves. We are self-governing. What we raise here with our pledges and with our donations sustains our future. So we're going to pass the basket in a minute. Uh, Tuvi, are you going to share a little bit real quick on... He's got a check there for KXCR in the amount of? $1,072. $1,072. The number 72 is very prophetic. So sometime we'll share that with you. Maybe I'll put it in the blast. Okay. All right. Okay. But what we have is an opportunity for you to consider Sayusla Outreach Services when we pass our basket today. Uh, did you want to share just two words on Sayusla Outreach? It's a necessary place for one to go when they are confronted with a lack of violence and serious problems in their life and their family. Please understand how necessary and how important SOS is to yeah. our community. Yeah, SOS, SOS. Uh, the other is our particular fellowship. And uh, we appreciate your generosity. And um, if you're watching this virtually and you cannot partake in our passing of the basket, please know you can send us a check to P.O. Box 2502, Florence, 97439. Or you can make your pledge payment of support by um, sending the check or going to our website, florenceuuf.com, <laughs> and click on the Donate button. So we really appreciate your uh, continued uh, financial support of this particular fellowship. So I'm going to ask if George would help on this side, maybe Zana on this side. We're going to pass the basket. And uh, SOS is on one side, FOOF is on the other. Before we enjoy the music, as we pass the basket, I ask that you repeat after me, Divine love through me. Divine love through me. Blesses and multiplies all that I am. Blesses and multiplies all that I am. All that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. And all that I receive. I am prosperous now. I am prosperous now. So Tuvi is going to play some light music as we pass these baskets.
Thank you for being here. I invite Zana to come forward. We're going to extinguish the chalice, this mighty flame. These words are from Eric Wickstrom. If you are who you were, and if the person next to you is who he or she was, if none of us has changed since the moment we came in here, we have failed. The purpose of this community, of any church, temple, zendo, mosque, is to help people grow. We do this through encounters with the unknown, in ourselves, in one another, in the other, whoever that might be for us, however hard that might be for us, because these encounters have many gifts to offer. So may you go forth from here this morning, not who you were, but who you, I hesitate to use the word, could be. <laughs> So may we all, blessed be. I invite you to stand and form a big circle around the chairs. We're going to sing our peace song. Uh, two of you will be leading us in that peace song with lovely music for that. Um, sing it out, sing it proud. If you want to hold hands, that's totally up to you. Um, if not, just quietly stand in place. Big circle, and we're going to sing our peace song. The words are on the back of the program. Okay. Everybody, look at Coming this great in? circle. Look around at us. Huh? Coming in? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, Ready? Yes. 